What do you do as an artist when you just have no time to paint? And what is taking all that time away from painting? I'm unloading my van and I'm bringing all of my things into my studio. This is what we do when we can't paint. So I brought in a few pieces that I need to embellish. So now it's time to get to work. First things first though, you gotta put your apron on. <laughs> That's the thing that makes, makes it mean that I have started work. When the apron is on, work is gonna get done. I had taken paint to my gallery in order to do some embellished prints at the gallery versus here in my studio. Now it's time to unload that paint, get it, oh, oh guys, I found a new color. Distraction, found a new color, it's so great. Put it all back in my drawers so I kinda know where everything is and I have it at a finger, my fingertips. And then next, I will have to put my palette together. I'm finding lids in the bottom of my container for paint gonna have to match these up so I don't ruin the paint. So for embellishing recently, I have used this wonderful Magello um, palette. It is pretty cool in that it has a rubberized lid, it clips in, and it keeps the paint for a couple of days. So here's reality, like, Here's some skin off the last palette. Don't quite know how that ended up there and not in the garbage. So here is a palette that I've been working from to embellish my prints at my gallery. So now I'm gonna add to it and here in my studio and get a, pr a print embellished for you today. Uh, at this point, it is two or three days old, this paint and it's getting a little goopy. I love it that way for embellishing. I like really fresh paint for uh, new creations, but for embellishing, I do actually love a uh, thicker acrylic. I don't add any heavy body or any mediums to my paint, so I like it when it gets a little thicker because an embellished paint, guys, is all about the texture that I add and kind of tricking the eye into thinking that it's an original. So I will add paint to this palette and then we'll get to embellishing. So it's always fun to see what people order when they order from my print sale. Fascinatingly, this time it's been um, a canvas called Tofino Sky. More than one person ordered it and from different parts of the country and in, in, in the world actually, I had quite a few. but. I also got an order for this 24 by 72 inch canvas, Lost in the Woods. So this is a bit, this is an older image for sure. And it was painted quite a few years ago. So guys, here's the amazing thing about embellishing prints. And I've got this old, old, old easel that I have to use tools now because it's kind of really bad to raise and lower. So I've got to replace this easel or do, um, I just want to go up a little bit. Ugh. I've got to replace it and I'm getting distracted. I know I will get back to what I'm saying. Um, I might need to put a French cleat on this wall. There we go. Okay. It's a workout. I don't go to the gym. I just raise paintings up and down. Okay. 
So this painting, Lost in the Woods, I painted quite a few years ago. Now, let me grab my coffee while I talk to you. Now, I sold the original, long gone. Sold it probably for four or $5,000. That was the, the price of that at that time. But because an artist retains the rights to their work, I am able to reproduce. So now Lost in the Woods has created me residual income. So they could have ordered this in a poster, a fine art paper, a canvas stretched without embellishment, but they ordered embellishment. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint about a third of it, quarter to a third of it, give it lots of texture. And it is an awesome opportunity for me to use my own work to create residual income. Do you get it? It's a powerful tool, powerful tool. Okay, so follow along. I'm gonna get my palette ready. I'll be right back and we'll paint. So I've got my palette ready. It's not a full palette. It's not all the colors that I use when I traditionally um, start in a new piece, but it is all the colors that I have identified that I wanna pick out and paint on this, this print. Um, so print is a reproduction, it's not an original. Even when I paint on it, I don't call it an original, I call it a unique piece. So I'm gonna focus in for you on this tree trunk right here, so you can follow along and I'll paint just a little bit of that. I won't make you watch the entire process, but that's gonna give you an idea of what I do, okay? So here's a close up of how I will be embellishing. And like I said, I paint a third to a quarter of the canvas again. So I'm looking at my canvas and I'm trying to determine what colors did I use. And now I'm going back in, picking up paint and laying it down. Now, am I completely concerned that it doesn't match Absolutely, no, I am not. Because the reason somebody ordered an embellished print was to get a unique piece. So I am going to be true to that. And here's my, I'm gonna see if I can show you my brush and where it will focus for you. So see how I've picked up two or three different colors there? I will blend that on this canvas and let the stroke live and not get a little bit crazy, not get too caught up in matching the under the underpainting of the print. But do you see how I'm adding the paint? I'm making it goopy. Okay, I'm gonna do this little gray part here. It's too, that's not gray enough. There we go. And I'm gonna let those strokes stick out on the paint. I'm not gonna flatten them. I'm gonna let texture guide me. That's the right phraseology. It's hard to paint and think, guys, at the same time. So here, yeah, I'm gonna do this little. I also find that the lightest spots in the print are the ones that show up really, really well with the embellishing. So if you can see what I'm doing, I am layering in paint. It's creating unique brush strokes on the canvas that I'm leaving raised so that it looks fabulous to the customer when they receive this. So I will let this dry and then I will come back in and I will varnish it. So here I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do some of this green. And sometimes I miss it and I get it far too light. So I have to go back in and darken it. 
but that's okay. Like I said, I'm reinterpreting for the customer this painting and creating a unique piece. So here I've got quite a bit of glow um, in the original. I, gotta, I wanna get rid of that before, and I don't wanna waste it. So here I'm gonna use the brush sideways to light. So I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of white. There we go. Here I've got a beautiful glow. So I'm actually using a red fluorescent with a red um, paint and then a bit of a burnt sienna to build that up and to catch that glow. I hope you guys can see this and you understand what I'm doing. And sometimes it's just so exciting just to go over it again. And but sometimes then I find a color and I go, oh, I can I can place that in various places. Once I get a perfect match that I think is great, I will go around and touch the entire canvas. And I do tend to do that. I do tend to do the same color over the whole canvas first, but I did this section so that I could show you. Now I'll zoom in for you. You see the strokes? The goopy strokes. I will leave them. I will let those dry and they will stand raised out. And when I varnish, it'll look almost like an original. So that's one of the things that I do when I'm not painting those glorious brand new canvases. One of the things that takes me as an artist away from actual studio time is actual studio time doing my work. Um, I have a wide variety of products that I sell and that I use my artwork in and managing that is also part of the day. But I can only do so much of that and then I have to get back to original painting. So I am going to be starting some fresh canvases very shortly. I'll bring you along for that ride too. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. Ask me questions as to what you'd like to know. This is a little snippet on one of the things that keeps an artist from painting. even though it's, it is actually painting. <laughs>